south of Yemen and east of Somalia sits the Socotra Archipelago, a truly lost world, it has been isolated since at least the Miocene, meaning that in this time unique species have evolved, without the competition of other animals and plants on the mainland. Today Socotra is a world heritage site, although that does not mean it is protected from habitat loss and other threats. In this video we will be looking in depth at the many endemic species of Socotra and the surrounding islands. First off we will start at the most western island, being 65 miles from Socotra. Abd al Khuri is rather small, being 36 miles in length and 5 kilometers in width. There's a small population of around a thousand people that rely mainly off of fishing. Many seabirds such as Persian shearwaters and red-billed tropic birds have colonies on the island, with there also being an endemic sparrow named after the island. The Abd al Khuri sparrow was only recognized recently, it was originally believed that the population on the island was an extension of the Socotran sparrow, but a 2008 study compared the two populations, deciding that there were enough differences to distinguish this species from the Socotran sparrow. One of the more interesting endemic species to the island is Euphorbia abdel Kiri, which is far more hostile than any other plant on the island. When the body of the plant is penetrated, it releases latex. This latex is toxic and can melt the human flesh. You can even get these guys as pets, with no regulation. Both the islands Samha and Dasha are found south of Socotra and have no evident endemic species. They are still, however, very important bird nesting sites. Furthermore, both host Socotra and Sparrow populations. Socotra is the largest island of the archipelago and, of course, hosts the most biodiversity. Many will travel halfway around the world to see Socotra Island's blood dragon trees. Much like the Joshua trees, they create an alien aura and seem to defy all that it means to be a tree. Blood dragon trees are a member of the group Dracaena, which has far more shrub species than it does trees. In fact, there are only six species of Dracaena that are morphologically a tree. When isolated on Socotra, the blood dragon tree's ancestors evolved to suit the harsh environment of Socotra. Some of the adaptations observed in blood dragon trees include their umbrella-shaped structure, which is used in order to protect younger seedlings, which typically grow closer to their parents than seen in other trees. Furthermore, their adaptation helps them collect rain and stops it from being evaporated. These trees are also known to inject several times more water into the soil than the local environment captures in rainfall, supporting hundreds of plants and animals as a result of this. They massively support the ecosystem around them, which makes it more unfortunate that they are sometimes deforested by locals. Other aspects which contribute to their deforestation include feral goats and climate change, meaning they are classified as vulnerable by the IUCN. The blood dragon tree is called the blood dragon tree because of the red sap it produces when cut. It develops this red because it is in contact with oxygen. It also produces flowers with a white or green coloration. Later in the year, it produces fleshy berries, which are eaten by birds and feral goats. To the native birds of the island, these berries are a vital life source. The Socotran cucumber tree, much like the blood dragon tree, evolved from a population of extinct tropical plants. Dendyrosiid cyclos Socotronus is the only member of its genus. The Socotran cucumber tree is a member of the group Cucurbitaceae, which has popular species such as the pumpkin, squash, and cucumber. Unlike the cucumber, they aren't easy to bite into, with fibrous wood and it grows up to one meter tall. The plant is monoecious, meaning there are male and female flowers on one individual. Their flowers are a yellowish orange. Their saplings grow under vegetation, meaning they are less vulnerable to being grazed upon by feral goats than other species of plants. The trees only exist on Socotra and Samha, with there being none on Abdel al Khuri or Darsa. Now we are done with the plants, and we'll move on to the interesting birds of Socotra, first starting off with the Socotran cormorant. Cormorants are awesome. Sometimes being referred to as the fisherman's nightmare, they have managed to adapt their way into every body of water on the planet. You have the almost to completely flightless cormorants, such as the spectacle cormorant or the Galapagos cormorants, as well as the great cormorants and the bad cormorants. <laughs> 
and they are some of the most universally hated birds for no particular reason. On the island of Socotra, seabirds are plentiful, with the Socotran cormorant breeding on the island. They later travel up north to the Persian Gulf, where they live alongside the Great Cormorant. Being only recognised in 2005, there are an estimated 110,000 Socotra cormorant breeding pairs alive today. Their population is on the decline due to bycatch and pollution. With a healthier fishing culture on both Socotra and in the Persian Gulf, we should hopefully see the population of the Socotran cormorant recover. Much like the Socotran cormorant, there have been many debates for some time on whether the Socotran buzzard is its own unique species. They are found all over the island, with the lack of mammals leading to the Socotran buzzard specialising in hunting reptiles and invertebrates. Being recognised in 2010, they are classified as vulnerable by the IUCN, that rhymes, though a recent population survey only counted 500 individuals. The main reason for their rarity may be down to them having to compete with the Egyptian vulture and similar species for nesting ground on the cliff faces. They usually nest at altitudes of 150 to 650 metres high. Other interesting species I have decided not to cover include the Socotran sunbirds and the dapper Socotran sparrow. Although I do love my endemic birds, I'm literally building a birdhouse at the moment, I would like to acknowledge the unique reptiles and spiders of Socotra. Camellio monacus is a particularly interesting species for its hissing noise when alarmed and its changing colours depending on the animal's mood. They are thought to be magic by the local people. The most popular resident of Socotra is probably the blue baboon tarantula, a popular pet. Monocentropus balfori is the scientific name. This species holds some unique traits among tarantulas. They are known for protecting their young, protecting their egg sac, and also living alongside other members of its species when prey is plentiful. There is one native mammal species, this being the Socotran pipistrelle, which is unsurprisingly for anyone who knows anything about isolated island ecosystems, a bat. They live mainly in shrubland habitat and fly throughout all of the altitudes on the island. Tropical cyclones are a big threat for the species and can be very damaging for populations. The increased frequency of these cyclones is due to climate change. Furthermore, habitat loss has led to this species being classified as endangered by the IUCN. Socotra has a count of 700 endemic species, making it truly the Galapagos of the Indian Ocean. The fact that life is so biodiverse in such harsh conditions is really a testament to the beautiful nature found there. No island is immune to invasive species, and of course Socotra is no exception. Feral goats plague the island, these animals threaten the local bird population and the vegetation. We know Socotra's biodiversity has been on the decline for hundreds of years, with writings in the 1st century AD revealing there were once much larger lizards and even crocodiles on the island. Rivers have been replaced by sand dunes, and reptiles, once recorded, have experienced a large decline. Due to many foreign nations using the plants of Socotra as medicines, the decline of vegetation has been well recorded. Many cultures would use the blood dragon tree's resin to cure problems such as diarrhea, general wounds, and ulcers in the mouth. Because of conflicts I am not qualified to go into, deforestation occurred in order for the locals to cook and keep warm, meaning an unknown amount of damage has been done to the dragon trees. There is hope though. Socotra's tourism industry has boomed as of late, and is continuing to grow every year. The distinct fauna and plants seem to be protecting themselves, with tourists and outside powers wanting them to be preserved at all costs. This alien and unique landscape deserves to be preserved, and that's why I think it's worth being discussed. I hope this has been a fulfilling alternative to Madagascar Week. Of course, this series will not be replaced, but Socotra Week may come back again someday. Madagascar Week will be occurring in 2024, if everything goes to plan. I would like to warn you all that although I do have the goal of uploading every two weeks, tests, revision, and homework might get in the way. I'd like to thank you all for watching, and thank you for 600 subscribers. It means the world to me that so many of you enjoy this content, and I will continue to produce it. Goodbye for now.